What's up everyone? My name is Questionable Ole, or Ole, or just Hey You, or whatever you want to call this channel. Today I will talk to you about how you can enhance your interactability with your viewers on your Twitch channel, while well, you are live, obviously. And we can do this by making some changes in our OBS studio, scenes, filters, uh, more stuff, by attaching yourselves to the channel points, redemptions. If, if you are like me, up until a, a, a month ago, I didn't know that there was a way to actually instruct the third-party software to, like, look at whatever was redempted, redempted? Look at whatever redemption was submitted by your users uh, and then do something, you know, without you doing anything manually. Now, after that, which is mind-blowing and cool on so many levels. Okay, so the software I will be talking to you about today, as you might have surmised from the title of this video, is Leoran Board. Created by a singular one-man army called Leoran. He has his own Discord, I will leave the link in the description. He is a very supportive guy, you can come there, ask questions, and uh, he, there is a huge community already of people who are Leoran Board savvy, let's say, because the software is... Uh, by virtue of it being homebrew, it's not as polished and user-friendly, but hell, it is so powerful. Alright then, so uh, what do we need to, to, to get started? First of all, we need a OBS Studio installed for Windows. And just keeping that in mind, everything I'll be discussing here is in the context of Windows operating system. Right? Okay. So, first thing you want to do is go to OBS Studio website, download the OBS software if you haven't done so, install that, and we can take it from here. You need to go to the forums, and we need to download one prerequisite to us being able to use Leoran Board software, which is WebSocket plugin. And uh, to keep it short, I'll go to plugins, of the cookies, whatever it's worth, OBS Studio plugins, and then somewhere here we'll find the WebSocket. I am always rubbish and like this takes time. I should have prepared, there we go, second page OBS WebSocket. Click on there, there will be a link to download, download that, install in, in the MSI installer. Um, make sure you are installing the software with your OBS closed, please. Don't install anything that impacts your OBS Studio while you have OBS Studio open. That will ruin everything, most likely. Okay, so once you have that installed, uh, you need to switch to another scene for me. Open up your OBS Studio. This is, uh, this is my desktop, basically one of them. O OBS Studio open. You need to go to Tools and see if you actually have this WebSockets server settings line. If you do, the plugin is working, it's enabled, it's doing its thing. Click there, and we have this pop-up window. You need to make sure that you uh, have this selected, enable WebSockets server. The, all the parameters here are default. I think 44444 is a default port number. Don't change anything here. Don't enable authentication. Alright. This is the OBS Studio side. This plugin will enable your onboard software to talk and communicate and instruct things to be done on OBS side. Okay, going back. Over here, now you need to go back to the forums and slightly different place in the tools section over here you will find your onboard Stream Deck Animator. Uh, click here, it will download a zip file, extract the zip file into a folder on your hard drive. I've extracted mine into the you know, local disk C, the Orion board, where I can easily remember, find it. By the way, uh, quick tip for Windows users, if you want a folder to be accessible from a quick access over here, always you navigate to that folder, be inside of it. Right click on the quick access over here and pin current folder to quick access. It will ensure that this Leoran board will always be over here. Right? Well, that's like a little bonus 
something something from, from me today. And there's the readme file, but we don't want that. First of all, you need to connect a file in this folder into our OBS Studio. And there are two ways we can do that. First way is you can add this HTML file, which I have highlighted, tsl underscore transmitted.html. You can put it as a browser source into any of your scenes in your OBS Studio. It doesn't matter. Is it an active scene, inactive scene? You need to put it only once in any scene. You, you can then hide that browser source and forget about it. You don't need to have it active. You don't need to remember that it exists. It needs to be there. And this is how I have it set up initially. For my demonstration purposes, I'll go to my scene over here so you can see it. You can see my OBS Studio. Uh, just click on the plus, you know, browser. Uh, yeah. And then local file. And then you need to browse to your Lioran board file. ESL underscore transmitter. Click open over here. It will add the file and then just click OK. And at that point you will have a new source. Hide that and you're good to go. Let me just remove that from help. Alright. Second way is to and this is the new and like suggested and improved way Lioran himself suggests us to 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 include the file is to make a custom doc out of it. Now, did you know you can have a custom doc in your OBS Studio, which will point, point either to URL, it can also be a, a HTML file in your local file system. And so that HTML file, TSL underscore transmitter, which we need to somehow put into our OBS, we can create a custom browser doc and uh, try pointing to that file. Let me try doing that. This is the first time I'm doing it. It's kind of live in my YouTube recording attempt, so you might not even see that because I will fail and I will crop this out. But let's try it out. Uh, so, TSL, clear on board. I don't know how to call it, right? And then in here, um, it will ask us for a path to a file. Now, what is the path to our file? How do we properly do it? I have this file highlighted okay so with the file highlighted i know there is a button let me just expand this there is a button in the home tab called copy path it it, it copies the absolute path with like c leoran board and then you know this file name into the clipboard okay and so if i go back to here in this window if I paste this over here and click apply, it sort of tries to load that, but I don't think that's correct. Maybe we just need to remove the quotes. Apply it again. Great. Start working. So copy the path via that button, paste it here and make sure to remove the quotes from end and the beginning of that path. Click apply. You'll have this. So if you have that one, you don't really need to have the Lioran board as a browser source. Oh, there we go, two different approaches how you can connect your Leon board to your OBS Studio. Second approach is better. Now I see why, because that file actually has buttons which you can test the triggers which would otherwise be sent by your users, raids, like something uh, from the Twitch's side. You can simulate that in this interface over here which will give you more control and, and, and flexibility to actually have things under your fingertips when you are designing your, your stuff you want your on board to do, right? So that's just a handful... That's just a helpful thing to have. All right, moving on. And with this thing uh, intact, the only thing left for you to do is to actually open the Lioran board software. If you go over here, you have a few folders that you need to be aware of. First of all, is Lioran board receiver, and this is the main thing that you will use to design your actions and um, 
This software needs to be running alongside your OBS studio when uh, you are streaming. So it, 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 it sort of acts as a hub. So double click the folder and there is a Leon board receiver. You click that, it opens. Amazing piece of software. Maybe it's a little bit more touch on user interface, but it is so functional. And that's what we're actually ultimately interested in. Does its job perfectly. So all the things you need to know about software when you first run it. These three selections, links, will not be grayed out for you and they need to be grayed out for everything to be connected properly. So you need to click on link your Twitch. It will uh, get you a pop-up window. Don't copy it, just open URL. It will open up your browser where it will ask you to log in with your Twitch account. You, you, you do that. You authorize this app to have access to your Twitch. App will save your login, I guess, information. So after every new launch of this program, you don't need to do that anymore. The program will know your login credentials and will just connect to Twitch automatically after that. Close this. And um, if you already have done this thing, as we did in this tutorial, we should be connected to OBS already here, linked to Twitch and connected to Twitch automatically. If we are not connected to Twitch automatically, click on this link and also go on the options and make sure auto connect to Twitch and auto connect to OBS VS, which is WebSocket, is ticked. Click OK. Right. We are good to go. Everything is working now. So uh, the plumbing, the whole connection, you know, the moving parts, which I, I realized that it's a lot, but there we go. We just, just set up everything from scratch. You are, we're, we're ready to roll, baby. <laughs> so, um, what are those things, right, in the middle? One, two, three, four. So those are, uh, imagine if you know how Stream Deck from Elgato looks like. Those are Stream Decks, different ones. Uh, and they are like by default here. It's what Lioran designed for us um, as a showcase of the capabilities of, of the software that he created. And uh, you will have five. Six one is mine, command center. I, cre I created that by using uh, add new deck, named it, and then I can double click into it. Um, and this is basically a grid of my button layouts. All of those are buttons. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with the buttons. You, you, you can name them, you can give them, them images. Um, when, you, when you created a, a button by right click and create blank button, basically, you, you will give it a name um, and it will be empty. And so now you want to start adding actions, one or, or a sequence of actions um, on, you know, what will happen when the button will be well, pressed, let's say pressed for now, okay? So you need to go to edit comments and if there is no commands added, it will not say edit comments, it will say add commands, right? Um, and further down the line, I will show you how you can add which triggers. For me, this button already has one, so it says edit which triggers, but basically that's the, that's the same. Add or edit which triggers and add or edit commands. So let's click on the commands. We'll pop out uh, a window with uh, like a sequence, like a rows, describing each command which will happen when uh, that button will get triggered. I'll go for a mm, simpler command, edit the punch, and there are basically three actions which I am taking. Change source visibility. So source can be anything, you know, in sources. In this particular case, I have a scene, separate scene for memes, and I have a source, which is called meme hand punch. Okay? And that's a media file, like a video, which I recorded. And I am making it, make sure that it's reset to, to false, maybe because I was triggering it beforehand, I'm not sure, I just want to make sure that the initial uh, visibility is switched off. And then I switch it on. And then it resets because the media file, my browser source, beam hands punch, is set to reset itself uh, when the source is loaded anew. Loaded means, you know, I 
I trigger it. Not visible and then visible. And so it starts playing. And I know that uh, the duration of it is like 3 seconds. So what happens here, this is a very important column called delay. Um, it, it, it signifies when the action will fire relative to the start of the button trigger. So you trigger the button and after how long will those actions which I have here actually execute. First one will execute after 0 milliseconds immediately, second one after 2 seconds, and third one after 5 seconds from the start of the button trigger. Those 5 seconds are not after the 2 seconds, but both of them are looking at the start of the button triggering time. So actually the duration between the second line and the third line is 3 seconds. Okay? Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't give me a shout, I'll, I'm happy to explain it one more time. And yeah, I know that my media file, like this small video, is like basically 3 seconds short. I know 3 seconds will pass, it will scroll over, and I'm closing it, putting visibility back. That's it. But that, that's a complex action. Two filter switches. Now, how do you trigger that? I have a trigger in this button. It's a different button, but the triggers are pretty much the same. And what I am like, extremely ecstatic about is you can add switch trigger and then look at the possibilities. Somebody gives you bits, somebody subs, uh, gifted sub amount, if, if the amount is higher than such and such number. And then the two most glorious redemptions is point redeem and point redeem with a message. So powerful. So you go for point redeem, I already have this here, and the only thing you need to make sure is the same is this text. It should be exactly the same, no white spaces anywhere before or after, same capitalizations and punctuations as the title of your Twitch redemption. Okay, so this is a big brain, and uh, let me just go ahead and show you how it looks like. I have this chat over here in my channel, right? So, because I'm, I'm the owner, I have unlimited amount of those Twitch channel points. And uh, if I just go and redeem, look at that, he, it triggered, triggered the, 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 the distortion on my face and also probably changed my voice as well because uh, there is an integration which I can do from your board to other software, namely in this case voice mode. And then I'm not doing anything, right? And after 20 seconds, I think, it will just go back to normal. Oh, like, like that, like that. So it's a fun little, but very enticing, I guess, way for, uh, and engaging way to, to, to present to your audience, to actually influence your stream in a meaningful way, without you having to do anything. Alright, so this was a quick introduction into Leo on board and connecting all the pieces together and showing off the <laughs> minuscule amount of powerful stuff that Leo on board can empower you to bring into the interactivity department with your viewers. Hope that was helpful and uh, if you like this video, I'm questionable Ole, please give me a like, maybe comment if this helped you and in what way it helped you and um, I stream every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday on Twitch. I'll leave the link in the description as well to that. I have a Discord if you would like to join. Uh, don't forget about Leoran's Discord if you want really masterful help with commands. Um, but I can also provide a medium to advance guidance on, on the software itself. Now, in future videos I will try to deeply delve into how my interesting memes are working and then just guide you step by step through the process of setting something like that up. Hope you enjoyed this and as always, stay questionable, stay weird. Peace.